The Sacramento Kings are about to do it. They are so close to finally ending that 16-year playoff drought. But this Kings team can do a little bit more than just in the playoff drought. This is a team that I feel like could probably win a first-round series in the Western Conference behind De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis. They've got two of the best players in the Western Conference right now, and yes, I will stand by that. They are both balling out right now. Uh, Fox is one of the most underrated players in the league. And then Malik Monk coming off the bench, dropping 45 on people. Keegan Murray's having a good rookie year. Kevin Herter, I mean, he's having a good bounce back year. The Kings are good, and we're going to talk about them here today. Make sure to hit the like button and leave me a comment down below as it really helps out in the YouTube algorithm. Now let's go ahead and get started. The Beam team. The Beam has been lit a lot this year. They've won five in a row now, including a couple thrillers over the LA Clippers. 37 and 25. Never in my wildest dreams would I have thought that the Kings would be 37 and 25 at this point in the season. The 16 year playoff drought is about to be over. And again, they started the year two and five. They are 35 and 20 since those first seven games. Number one in points per game, and or excuse me, number one in total points, and number one in two point percentage. Uh, and the stars are out in Sacramento right now. Two of the best players Sacramento has seen this century. Demontis Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox teaming up to take Sacramento back to the promised land. Sabonis so averaging 19 points a game, 12 rebounds. He's playing very good basketball right now. He's honestly a miniature version of Nikola Jokic in his own way. He averages more rebounds than Jokic, 61% from the field, 36% from three. He can stretch you out. He can take you inside. He can do really whatever he wants to do with a basketball in his hands. He also averages about seven assists per game, playing 34 minutes a night. So honestly, like I said, the stats reflect a miniature uh, Nikola Jokic. Now, the Aaron Fox, he's been balling as well. Uh, 24 and a half points a game and six assists a night for De'Aaron this year. Yeah, he he's been. This is probably the best season of his career. Not maybe not statistically, but with the fact that the Nuggets are 37, or excuse me, the Kings are 37 and 25 right now. Uh, really, really good. 51% from the field as well on 25 almost points per game. And then De'Aaron also averaging 4.3 rebounds in 33 minutes per game. Now the bench guys are the huge key here in Sacramento. Uh, Terrence Davis, Malik Monk, Trey Lyles may not get all the recognition in the world. Uh, Malik does. He's averaging about 13.5 points, 3.5 rebounds, 2.8 assists, and man, went off on the LA Clippers the other night for 45 off the bench proving he still got that buckets mentality 43 percent from the field 32 percent from three in 22 minutes a game so I mean you look at the efficiency the per 36 numbers are really good for Malik Monk now Trey Lyles doesn't always show up in the stat sheet seven points a game about four rebounds half a block or so but he does the little things he, Terrence Davis, Davion Mitchell, they all do the little things that coaches always talk about are so important. 47% from the field, 37% from three, 15 minutes a game. Again, so his per 36 numbers looking a lot better than the minutes that he gets, but he is efficient in those minutes. Terrence Davis, 6.5 points, 2.5 rebounds, 1.3 assists per game. Another guy, very efficient in his minutes, um, even efficient shooting the ball a little bit. Uh, 42% from the field, 35% from three. But again, he's only playing 13 minutes per game. Uh, now the slump is on for Kevin Herter. He was traded as a salary dump, uh, and he started the year with his hair on fire. He could not miss. Uh, now he's averaging 15 a game, three and a half rebounds, three assists, and he's not been quite as hot as he was earlier in the year. Although, as of late, he has picked it up the last, you know, this little five-game win streak. He's definitely picked it up in terms of efficiency, but he went from 51% from the three, which obviously is not sustainable, uh, dropped all the way back down to 38% from three. But, you know, he could be back on the rise soon after a couple of very, very efficient games lately. Now, the wings for the Kings are big keys as well. Uh, Keegan Murray, the rookie, and then the old man, Harrison Barnes, who's been here forever, it feels like. Uh, Keegan Murray's having a really good rookie year. Harrison Barnes averaging 15 points, 5 rebounds, 1.7 assists. He, you know, at some points this offseason and at the deadline, I thought they would trade Harrison Barnes. Turns out 
They didn't, and it paid off. 47% from the field, 38% from three, and he plays in 32 minutes per game. He also has a lot of playoff experience, one of the only players on this team with a lot of playoff experience back from his Golden State Warriors days. Keegan averaging about 12 points, four rebounds, .8 blocks per game. Um, so he's, you know, not the greatest rookie season of all time from a number four overall pick, but he has been good, and, you know, maybe he's one of those guys that wants to stay in Sacramento, unlike Jay Nivey. 44% from the field and 42% from three for Keegan. Now, beyond the numbers, another guy here for the Kings, Davion Mitchell. 6.2 points, 2.2 rebounds, 18 minutes per game for Davion. They've got a lot of guys coming off this bench that don't play the most minutes in the world, but, man, are they efficient in the minutes that they get. He is such a great defender. I mean, there's been multiple possessions this year where he has guarded one through five, you know, just picking him up, 94 feet, uh, locking down. Davion, he's one of the best defenders. He was one of my favorite players in his draft class. Hasn't really lived up to it in terms of points per game and all that, but still a phenomenal defender and does a little thing. Now, the 16 long years since the last time the Kings made the playoffs, it has been forever. Uh, but I think that this year, they can finally, you know, I mean, 37-25, and 25, they should be in the playoffs right now. Even though it is a tight Western Conference, they started to put some distance between themselves, uh, as we're about to see here with the standings. But I think they can win, you know, a series, maybe two. A seven-game series between them and the Clippers would be amazing to watch. Looking at the standings here, Denver is far and away in first, Memphis in second, but the Kings are like a game out of second place right now. The Grizzlies lost John Morant for at least two games. Dylan Brooks has been suspended. That also lost Brandon Clark. The, the Grizzlies are, are weak right now. So the Kings right there in third place are looking at jumping up into second place and trying to run down the Denver Nuggets. Now they do need to continue to put space between them and the Suns, who are two games back, and the Warriors, who are three games back. The Warriors getting hot at the right time. Look out for Golden State. Dallas, Minnesota, L.A., Utah, New Orleans. I mean, everybody down there. From like 5 to 13 is jam tight. Uh, now, looking at the upcoming schedule for the Kings, they play at Minnesota, uh, and then they play New Orleans at home. Or excuse me, they play Minnesota at home, New Orleans at home, and then New York at home. Uh, two winnable games there, and then you get the New York Knicks. Then you go to the Phoenix Suns, play the Milwaukee Bucks, go to the Chicago Bulls, to the Brooklyn Nets, to the Washington Wizards, and to the Utah Jazz. Now, this is, you know, just looking at it, a much easier schedule than what they have. Well, as of late, their schedule has been very weak. Houston twice, Dallas twice, uh, Phoenix, Portland, L.A. twice, the Clippers, and the Thunder twice. So this is, right now, this is the weaker part of their schedule, and they're doing what they need to do. They're winning the games that they need to win behind their all-star duo of the Montes Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox. Let me know down in the comments below, what was the last all-star duo in Sacramento? Probably been since... The really early 2000s that they have had an all-star duo. Uh, Kevin Herter, Malik Monk, Keegan Murray, Terrence Davis, Harrison Barnes. All play in their roles, and they all play very key roles here. Um, Malik Monk especially. I've, I've been, been happy to watch the resurgence of Malik Monk now that he got back with his old buddy from college, De'Aaron Fox. Um, Keegan Murray should continue to progress. Kevin Herter, hopefully he continues to light it up. But this Kings team... They got a lot of weapons. Uh, Davion Mitchell and Trey Lyles off the bench as well. Uh, and then you never know when Rashawn Holmes is going to come in the game and give you a few buckets off the bench. Uh, he, he came in a couple of games ago and played very well. Uh, so, yeah, everything's shaping up well for the Sacramento Kings right now. But y'all let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on the Kings. Make sure to like button and leave me a comment if you did enjoy today's video at any point. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching today's video.